Watch till the end for the newest giveaway. I wanted to start off with types of glue and the reason I use the one I do. Now, I've tried all of these. I didn't just buy them for this video or anything. As you can see, they've been used a lot. And I want to uh, go over each one. I have done in some kind of broken pieces different um, stones and let them set for 24 hours. And now I'm going to show you how they set and what it kind of looks like. Okay, first I'm going to go over the E6000, which is um, a favorite among a lot of people I know. Um, the reasons I don't like it is because, for one, it's flexible. For two, it does dry clear. However, it stays thick, so it can attract um, dirt and dust and oils, and it'll turn yellow over a little bit of time. And also... It's very hard to precision place it and I've let this stone dry for 24 hours and I'm going to try to push it out. Now it, I'm obviously out of the camera view but it's hard to push out but right there you can see I did it and I don't want my stones to be able to really push out. I would rather break than just push out like that and watch it's you can see um, that it's got all these like sinews that come out from it that will show you kind of like if it still looks like that after it's dried then it's going to obviously be able to pick up other debris to make it look yellow and stuff over time. And this is the reason I don't use E6000. This is glass bond. Um, I really I used a lot of it. I bought it for uh, jewelry and then I tried to use it on mirrors. Here's my problem with it. Does it hold? Yeah, it holds. I'm not trying to damage the stone here, but it, it you can see it holds just fine. But it's also one of those stretchy, kind of leaves the sinews. You can see right here. And two let me tell you this stuff smells it doesn't smell as bad as the next one but you need to open windows when you're using this one okay it's just it kind of has a lot of the same elements as e6000 but it's not as strong okay i really want to talk about this one because i got it from um, mr stone the place that i said was so good with gemstones and it is it's an amazing website i love it However, this stuff on there, I bought it, it was like pinpoint precision, all this other stuff. It is gooey, it leaks out, I do not like it, it doesn't hold very well, it's sort of like a rubber cement. So when you're trying to put the stones in there as well, like they, they stay out bubbled more than you would like. So when you have like a great finish or you know or fit it's not gonna allow you to stick that stone in there flush like you want everything to you can see I'm, I'm like putting it out right here and it's just leaking and I just really want you guys to know this because I thought it was gonna be amazing and even if I could take it and just put it on uh, put it on with a toothpick I still wouldn't do it because it's so gooey and also this has a very strong strong chemical smell to it that I do not like at all I don't like using it in my workroom I don't like it um I still just have it I don't even know why it's just sitting in my jewelry box but when I started this video, I wanted everybody to know about it. And then I realized that I even said Mr. Stone <laughs> for the place. And this is the glue that he sells. And I do not um, suggest it. And it doesn't hold very well. <laughs> like, and it's extremely hard to precision place. Now, I did one stone on here. And... You'll be able to see. 
There it is. Hold on, let me get my hold right. And you can kind of see it glistening around the edges. That's how much I couldn't. I couldn't even precision place it. It squishes all out of the sides. And I do not recommend this glue at all. Now here's my favorite one. Um, like I said, there used to be one I used to use, but they stopped making it, and then I found this. And it's Gorilla Glue, and you need to get the gel, not any of the liquid or cement or anything like that, just the gel. And you shake it well, and all you need is a dot for most of this. So I used just a, a littler one even for this, just to show you that I could precision put them in. And if you can't tell, I am pushing with all my might trying to get this thing off and you'll see in a second I actually break the rhinestone instead of getting it out which is amazing this stuff and I didn't put it in like I didn't put like 3,000 globs of it in or anything I just you know just swirled it around like I showed on the first video <laughs> It's it's great stuff. This is this is the one I would definitely tell you guys to get. So removing stones sometimes can kind of be tricky depending on what kind of glue is used, and it just so happens that I have a brooch that has been I picked up just I mean I don't think even a week ago, and it's been glued with so many different glues that it's perfect for this video. So I'm going to let you guys see how I remove it and kind of tell you how I remove it. So the first stone that is obviously here is the center one. And you can kind of see how when I move it, it's kind of gooey. So I'm figuring they used something like E6000 or some kind of cement um, that was, you know, proposed to be so great for jewelry. And this has obviously been on here a while, but you can see it's still gooey and flexible. It's easy to get off, so I'm always happy when it's an easy removal, but it's still, I don't want you guys to use it for your jewelry because <laughs> this is what it turns out to be. The stones will even move. I love how we have this beautiful uh, Made in Austria vintage thing and then we have holographic stones um, that replaced it. Uh, so, but you can see it's very easy to get off. And make sure when you get it off that like your cup is clean from the glue residue and stuff as well. So when you replace the stones, you're not putting it back in there. So the first few are easy um, that you see that are out are had the E6000 in there or kind of the, the rubber cement like glue. And these other ones have uh, different glues in them as well. That has some sort of just Elmer's glue. You can just pop that one out. This one has some sort of super glue. I am not sure if it was Gorilla Glue or not, but it is very hard to get that one out. Now this one had some sort of maybe super glue as well, and you can see the back held on to it when, uh, when the uh, stone was popped out. So I'm getting all of the debris out, so when I replace the stone, I won't see that through it, it won't taint the new stone, so that's what I'm doing with this cup right here. So um, what I'm worried about now is this really hard super glued stone, and basically what I'm going to have to do is stick it in boiling water. It's not going to hurt anything, but it is going to soften that stone, and any of the stones that are loose will fall off too, so I can put them back on or just clean it off. You can see here I've got all the fake stones out and I'm picking out um, stones for replacing because it's just 
uh, Austrian pieces are so beautiful. Their stones were so great. I really need to match them well. And here's the before and after where you can see that the stones are all matched up. It's air specific, so it's completely restored to original, cleaned, all the other stones are removed, and it's just a great brooch now. So I feel like one of the hardest things to clean in um, costume jewelry is the faux pearls. And that's because they're so, um, what is it, like fragile. The coating on them is so fragile. And here's an older pair that has uh, screw back earrings. It has um, a sterling backing. And I use a glass cleaner without um, ammonia in it. And I just take a Q-tip and barely swab it. Sometimes I just do the back first to test it. But I just barely swab it. And then I just start cleaning. And um, pearl, these pearls are really easy to get dirty. They attract a lot of dust. And there's a little spot on this one that's already been messed up. Sometimes you have to scrub just a little bit harder. And then there's people who say take it and put it in some really mild water and with dish soap or really mild dish soap and don't even scrub them, just like twist them around. I honestly don't even like that because it can soften the coating up and then when you go to dry them, you could just completely peel the, the coating right off of it. And anybody who's ever tried to clean these or dealt with it, um, they just know. They know how easy it is to destroy the coating of a faux pearl. And um, I was about to take my metal uh, little wand, but I don't even do that. So when I have to get in the creases, I even just take a toothpick. Uh, because it's a lot more gentle than anything metal and it won't really go in there. So... I feel like it's harder to clean faux pearls than most things. Now, of course, you can try to uh, do it in, the, you know, a sink full of warm water. I just, for me, I don't suggest it. Um, I feel like this is the better way because it's safer and you can do the pressure and put the liquid on there for as long as you need. And here you can see them side by side, the one that I just finished and the one that hasn't been done yet. And I'm just going to take that same Q-tip, it's still dirty, and show you how easy it is. Um, to show you this isn't like some kind of camera magic or something I'm doing. It literally comes off really, really great and it's not damaging that coating over the plastic or glass um, half circle there. And right here, you can still kind of see some brownish stuff that's not gunk. Um, that's where the glue has turned yellow over the years. And I just have my little pad here. I'm going to shine just right there just to show you um, the difference between the one that's done and not. So here's another example of a piece of jewelry that I do not suggest you submerge because of the faux pearls on there. It's dirty. We want to clean it. We want to, you know, make it shiny and beautiful again. So I'm just going to take that same non-ammonia glass cleaner and a Q-tip and just go in there and start cleaning it. And this is always the best thing for just especially small pieces because the number one thing when we're cleaning um, costume jewelry is that we don't want to damage it. So when we're using a Q-tip like this, we have a lot of control over how much we're getting on there, the pressure we're putting on there, and, and it shines all of these up and loosens um, glue or dirt. And also, I like to take those baby toothbrush and kind of dry brush over it too. You can already see like there's some little flakes coming out, and that's what we want to do. Um, sometimes when I can't get into other spaces, even with the toothbrush, I have paint brushes I take and I clean in the cracks. And this is um, not so much just because we're trying to be super soft with it, but more because we can't get in those cracks good enough. 
these earrings still need to be restored, but side by side you can tell the pearls are cleaner, the glass is brighter and shinier, the dust is gone. So after they're restored and cleaned, they'll be great. So cleaning silver, gilt, silver, and brass is completely different than um, just the regular costume jewelry. Um, I love these polishing cloths. You can get them in all different brands or whatever. These are like little mini sunshine cloths. Um, I also use uh, semi-chrome, um, which is great doubling uh, to test Bakelite. And then also Tarnix. I think some people just have something against this, but I love it. So here's a pair of uh, vintage brass hands holding faux pearls. Now I did wash them and I avoided uh, the pearls so not to mess up the coating. But I'm going to take the polishing cloth and polish these. Because no matter what you do when you wash with water, you're never going to get real tarnish off. Some people call it patina. The only thing I think that patina is, at least in my opinion, is bronze. Everything else is tarnished, and it will eventually eat through your, um, your metal, like pitting it. Uh, so I took it off camera for a second so I could rub a little harder. And you can see it's amazing. It's just amazing the difference. And it literally did take just that long. And these are some of my favorite, favorite cloths. Um, but you have to be careful with them because if you use it on gilt silver, you will absolutely uh, take the gold right off and mess it up. So you don't want to use these cloths on gilt silver. And now I'm just going to, you know, just lightly clean the pearls so it'll all look better. Now I'm going to show you, this is the problem with these cloths. This is not even, this is like a gold plated piece. It's a Hattie Carnegie just that came out of a junk box. But if you use these on gold plated or gilt silver or something like that you are going to take the gold right off of it you can see what's it leaves it on the beautiful silver side don't get me wrong but unless you are trying to turn your entire project silver you do not want to use these on uh on anything with just that because it'll take it off these cloths are that good, and I don't want you to mess up your jewelry and say, she told me to use these cloths. I did, but please know what jewelry you're using them on. So a piece like this that's an old antique piece is actually gold-filled and not gold-plated. So there's a big difference because gold-filled means it's a lot thicker. It's in there. You can use this. It's not going to rub the gold off. When you have a gold plating, you just have like so many... Um, I think it's like called microns of gold on there, and you can just wipe it off easy. But on a gold filled piece, you're not going to wipe it off. So you can see, um, you can just rub this really, really hard and get it really shiny. And, uh, and two gold filled pieces, don't be afraid to just stick them in super hot soapy water. It's no big deal for them at all. But you can see how nice and clean it comes with these cloths. I just, I don't know, I have, I think it's a very satisfying feeling when I see um, that jewelry coming back to like that natural beautiful luster. So this is Semichrome. Um, the truth is, is I don't really use it much for polishing. Um, every once in a while I do when I have a stone that or a brooch that has like really precious stones that I can't do a whole lot with. Um, but honestly, I really just have it mainly for testing Bakelite or old plastics. But I just wanted to show you real quick the way you use it. You just need a tiny bit, like just a very tiny bit. And I put it on and you just rub and buff it in. And you'll see it gets the dirt off, but I feel like it's not... I don't know, I feel like it doesn't, 
get it as clean and shiny as I would like it. I don't know. I don't know how else to put it. And two, you just buff it, buff it, buff it. And then you're supposed to take a, a buffing rag and like let it dry and then buff it off again. And I still don't like that because I feel like it even leaves kind of like the, the smell on there because this does have a very strong smell. And then you have to go wash the jewelry. But as you can see, the dirt is coming off. So if you have something really, really, really thick with a lot of tarnish, you could probably start off with this. And then maybe go to Tarnix or something else. I, I'm not sure. But it's easy to use. It does work well. It's just, it smells pretty bad. And I feel like there's better alternatives. But I love it for testing Bakelite. <laughs> and you can see it's getting a lot of that gunk and tarnish off. But still, it's just not, um, I feel like this is one of my least favorite ways to polish jewelry. And I wouldn't use this on regular costume jewelry at all. So I have messed up three or four pairs of earrings and brooches like this. I'm just going to take that polishing cloth and buff that off. But the thing is, is these are glass earrings. They're handmade. And this is plastic little uh, florets or flowers around there with these beautiful rhinestones in them. The problem is, is I used to always try to, you know, pick off that plastic, but even this glue has gone yellow throughout the years, and that plastic has hardened, and every time you try to pick it off, I guarantee you it's going to break or crumble, um, chip, and you're just going to mess up the whole design. So the one way I have found to do this, and this is the only way, is literally boil a pot of water and then take it off the stove don't leave it in you know on the stove or anything but take it off and throw these earrings in there now these are not plastic earrings they are glass earrings just the little florets are plastic and what's gonna happen is is you leave it in there for three or four minutes pull it out and then you can gently peel it off that uh, that glue is going to peel off and as you can see I did one and not the other and you can just glue them back on and they look stunning and if you do the precision gluing you won't have to worry about them yellowing again so I feel like most uh, of us collectors and resellers have seen the back of earrings like this um, or the backs of stones like this now this is just the gold plating coming off unless you know how to literally gold plate. I would never suggest painting it gold. It usually just never turns out right. But you can see that's not dirt. Um, that's just been rubbed off throughout the years. The biggest part of this is the back of that rhinestone is showing where they have coated it with a foil, they call it foil backs, um, to make that stone gorgeous and shine. And yes, I know it's easy to think you can just throw this in water and brush it, but that's not what I suggest at all because that's how you get that backing. It comes off and then you start seeing little dead spots in your rhinestone and then it's just basically done. This is one of those things where I love using the paintbrush because I can get in there without scraping it off because most of these that are open back and have the foil on them like this already have spots that are scraped off. So if I even take a toothbrush and just get under there a little bit, I'm going to start flaking it off and it's not going to look good. And I hate that. And I never want that. You can even see like right there, there's a piece that's already flaked off. And I don't want it to get become any worse. And I don't, I can wet them a little if there's something really heavy on there. But just using a toothpick and just like a soft bristle toothbrush, uh, or I mean paintbrush is what I suggest for um, these open foil back stones. And right here on the edge, you can see that the gold plating's coming off, and there's just not a whole lot you can do about that. 
So here's a stunning maser piece I just got, and um, you can see these don't have foil backs. So I did submerge this, and I did um, use mild soap and wash it. But usually once I do it once, I don't like to continually do it or to loosen up any of the, the coating on the brooch. So usually, um, like in between right there, there was still some stuff. I just take it. And also, uh, I'll take the paintbrush and do inside the cups because sometimes um, there's dirt that gets trapped in there and it's really, really hard to get out. And I will just use it on that. But this piece is just so stunning. But I just kind of wanted to show you that these don't have foil backs so I can wash them because I'm not worried about tarnishing or messing up the backs of these stones whatsoever. And just another quick look because this piece is so beautiful. Who wouldn't want to see it? I love it. Here are some of the pieces that I uh, fixed and cleaned during these last two videos. And I'm just kind of re-showing them. I hope this really helped everybody and um, help learn how to clean and fix your pieces. And just let me know if you have any questions or um, comments. I always love to hear them. And I always love to help if you need help with anything. And uh, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. And I hope you all had a wonderful Easter.